This is Tech Addicts. This week, the continuing discussion on deconvergence. What photo viewer are you using? Reddit going public, X doing NSFW communities, the Yaw Motion Simulator, Kindles as weather stations, and some love for Edifier. Welcome to the Tech Addicts Podcast. Yes, it's Easter, and I'm here talking to you about tech with Mr. Ted Simon. How are you, Mr. Ted Simon? I'm okay, Mr. Gareth Mileasy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I mustn't grumble, um, lest we turn the podcast into a health special. Uh, we'll leave that to Tech Talk UK. Um, which is actually quite interesting because, um, as you know, I have recently been um, told that I've got diabetes and Kev and Richard um, talk about that at real length because Kev's, um, well, both of them now have, have, have got the same thing. And it is quite interesting. Not exactly tech, although they do relate to tech sometimes. But anyway, the sun is out here. It's Easter weekend, as you say. So every bugger's come down to get to be in their caravan. So it's really <laughs> busy. I tried to go out Friday, which is obviously Good Friday, and yesterday. And I've never seen Tesco so pull up. Down the aisles, it was like, put your arms down by your sides and kind of penguin your way through. It was I, 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 phenomenally busy. I just couldn't believe it. Never seen it like it. And, and and other people I've spoken to about it said, yeah, they were out as well this weekend. And, and everyone is just going out and filling the world up. Is that the same in, in Northern Ireland? Well, yeah, but I would probably say that um, the, the Tesco problem is because shops cl- can close for a couple of days of Easter and people panic and run out and have to get everything uh, they need in their cupboards. It's payday as well, I suppose. Um, and, uh, and and buy chocolate uh, so that they can feed their kids and continue to contribute to the diabetes problem that you, <laughs> yes. Ted and Richard, or you, Kev and Richard, are um, suffering at the moment. Yes. But uh, yeah, no, um, yes, it, it is Easter after all, and you know it's it's a, it's a fun Easter too. It's to remember about all kinds of well. Eastery things and and obviously the Good Friday Agreement was signed on the Easter and now we have the Good Friday Arraignment, uh, which is a, a a classy thing that Ted knows. Not if you're about. if you're going to turn it into a politics show, <laughs> I'll turn it into a health show. Um. No, but it's just such a good <laughs> joke. I have to say, it. I love it. It's but so the funny. but but the but the going back to what you were saying about Tesco. But the mad thing is that. Uh, maybe people assume that the supermarkets are closing, but they're not. The supermarkets are open every day across this weekend, yep. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. No one would be able to not get into the shops to get what they want, but yet they all assume that they will have to, and so they go and panic buy and, and hoard, and people are just stupid, aren't they? They are, absolutely. But, you know, it, it, there's two types of people out there. There's one who goes, oh, Tesco might be closed tomorrow, we'll have to go and get stuff now. And the other, oh, we don't want to have to go to Tesco over our holidays, so let's go out and get everything now. And uh, and that's why Tesco is full. There are other shops, obviously, available. Um, I was in Asda yesterday mm-hmm. um, buying salad cream that was the only thing we needed was salad cream <laughs> and we genuinely needed it because we'd run out and my son has suddenly realized that salad cream is the best thing <laughs> um so i had to go and get a big bottle of it um to last because tesco might be closed today um and and asda was chockers as yeah. as the kids yeah. would say yeah i can't i just could not believe how busy it was and and for some bizarre reason they had closed 
four of the self-service tills. So when you when you walk into this um, this bay, there should be twelve tills there working. Four of them have been opened up and they're just out of action now. And they've been like that for a week. And I think to myself, is that a purposeful ploy to control the people going through or something? Or are, are they broken? Or if they are broken, surely they can fix them in a week. So, well, maybe they have the day off. You know, they can't be expected to have all these self, <laughs> self-service tills working all the time. Yeah. They've got to have a leave chart for them because, you know, self-service tills are people too. Androids have feelings. Yes. Anyway, stop! don't, don't start me on that. A little unionized cinema. Wow. And, uh, let's not go there. I'll tell you what. I, here's a novel idea. Let's talk about tech. Oh, no, we haven't done the weather yet. Uh, no, we haven't sunny, done the weather. hot and sunny here and... No, actually, it's not hot, it's, but it is sunny. It's very blue sky and sunny. What's it like there? Oh, it, it's sunny as well. Um, and it might be sunny enough that I might be able to go and sit in the garden later this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, but I'll have to go to Tesco and pick up some Chloe <laughs> or, or Cobra. Oh, dear. I don't have any beer in the fridge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put some, oh, put some, um, some oil down the sides of your arms. Then you'll be able to to, to slip through the the <laughs> masses of people easier. That's that's true. But, uh, but from what I hear, um, there there are kids who run in with footballs and and on bicycles as well, and zip down the aisles of our local Tesco. Really? <laughs> yeah, unruly <laughs> children. And apparently, you're not allowed to tackle them or say anything to them. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the way the world is going. Oh, Feral I, I, kids. Yeah, yeah, I saw this video um, which flicked, flicked through on TikTok the other day um, showing how people can shoplift now and nobody does anything about it. People are blatantly just going into shops and picking stuff up and putting, just taking it out of the shop. And everyone yeah. is too, they're so frightened to tackle anyone that they just don't. It's no wonder all the shops are closing if that's going on. Well, uh, my my daughter's boyfriend works in Poundland and he says they do absolutely nothing about shoplifters now. Yeah. They, they can't. There's nothing they can do. They can't report them to the police. The security in, in the local shopping centre can't do anything about them, so they just let it go and they have to mark up other products to be able to cover the amount of, of loss yeah. that they get. So they are doing something about it. They're charging yeah, you yeah. for what they lose. It's it's really no surprise that um, shops are closing. I, you know that that's just another nail in the coffin, I think. And 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 the rise of um, you know um, Amazon and what Amazon do and and the model of delivery is just going it, to it's going to take. We'll, we'll have no shops left. The only shops we'll have left will be eating houses, places you go out for meals to, and cinema, entertainment places. But then you see, what is a re- what's a restaurant going to do in a high street if someone has their meal and then just legs it out the door? They're not going <laughs> yeah, to they're that not accost them either, are they? And at the same time, you can't rely on Amazon. Um, if, if you go on to Reddit and have a look at the Amazon Prime Reddit, there's countless people saying, I ordered some AR goggles or whatever, or, or you know, I paid £400 for a PlayStation, and I got a box with a bag of flour in it, yeah, yeah. and Amazon don't believe me. <laughs> what, like, what, what do you do? How do you realistically but, point out um, or, or prove that something that you ordered wasn't in the box? You can't really. First rule of Amazon, though, is never order anything from a third-party seller. Never. Oh, yeah. Only ever order it if it's in an Amazon warehouse in your country. And then you've got some kind of... And also, don't order anything unless it's covered by Prime, um, you know, um, what's the word they use? Um, um, You know, guaranteed by Amazon, you know, no quibble return. Yeah. Yeah, the Sorrel thing. I did. That happened to me once. I sent back this phone to Amazon, and it was a third-party seller. That's before I started realizing not to do that. Um, and they they said that the box arrived empty. And I went back to the Hermes shop, and I got a, a ticket to say, um, well, well, when I when I dropped it off at the Hermes shop, they gave me a ticket that said the weight of it that was in there. But they but they basically said to me, well, that weight could have been anything. It could have been a brick or something. It's not <laughs> it's not proving what was that the phone was inside the box. Um, 
in the end, they they paid up, given that I've been an Amazon customer for the last like two hundred and forty one years, and they gave me the the benefit of the doubt. But um, oh. but they but I had to fight teeth and nail for it. They they really didn't want to because the third party seller clearly had just told Amazon that um, the box was empty. So anyway, I, it hasn't. That, that's the only time it's happened to me. And that's the courier pulled a sly one and sliced it open and then resealed it. Or something. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, we're we're in danger of getting into the scheduled bants <laughs> section that we we have. Um, sorry, that's that, that's lifted from another show. But uh, the scheduled banter section, we'll call it. Um, so we'll we'll go into feedback because some folks have written in, but we're going to start with. Feedback from, I believe this is Mr. Ted Salmon, um, who says he has received his Marshall Action 3. Mm-hmm. It's in the house. It is. And, and uh, he's going to tell us about it. I got fed up with um, um, hinting at Santa Claus to buy this bloody thing for me. So in the end, I, they had five months um, offer on in Amazon. I thought, I'm going to treat myself to this. I really, really want it. And I really fancy it. And blah, blah, blah. So I did. Five months to pay. And... Bugger me, after a, about two weeks after I bought it, they reduced the price by 35 quid. <laughs> but, you know, do you know, I couldn't be bothered to return it. They, they've got this new policy now at Amazon whereby they used to do price match. Um, if, if you bought something under those circumstances and within, you know, a, a while the price went down, they would they would give you back the, the difference and they'd refund you the difference, but they won't now. They All they say to you is you've got 31 days to send it back, send it back and then order it at the lower price, which is just completely nuts. Anyway, this Marshall Acton 3 is just lovely and I'm really pleased that I've got it and it's now attached to my computer madly. Um, I put my Razer stereo speakers away <laughs> We've we'll attached this to my oh, computer, right. and it's great. It is actually stereo, but you've got to get pretty close to it to appreciate the fact that it's stereo. You, it's not really stereo, and I don't know why Marshall have made it stereo. Really, you know, they should have just stuck to the traditional kind of what it is a basically a amplifier style style speaker. It's got bass and treble controls, which are just great. You know, real dials and knobs on the top, as you expect mm. from Marshall. Um, and it's got you know Bluetooth. There's no fancy um, um, uh, digital voice stuff, or there's not even a microphone on it, so you can't use it for phone calls. But it is not a battery driven phone calls. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit overkill for a phone call. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so even though it's a Bluetooth speaker, you can't use it to pair up with your phone for making calls and receiving calls. There's no um, Google Assistant or there's no smart stuff on it at all. And that's great. I like that. And there's also no um, uh, there's no battery in it, which means you plug it into the mains in the old fashioned way, which means that, yes, all right, if there's no mains, it won't work. If you've got a power cut, it won't work. Well, unless you've got an anchor power house thingy, which I have. Um, but it doesn't rely on a battery that in five years' time you've got to send back because it's knackered. And hmm. um, this thing will long, long last as long as there's electricity. Um, anyway, um, I, I won't bang on about it too much. It's really, really nice. The sound is typically Marshall, bassy. Um, you know, it's far too loud for me to be able to use properly where I live. Um, but it's just, it's the quality of the sound. Um, I don't have it on loud particularly, but it, it's just the the way in which the sound resonates. And it's just lovely. I really appreciate Marshall gear. Terrific, terrific. It really does look very, very nice uh, with that sort of that leather look to it. And then the, there's like brushed, uh, brushed gold at the top, or is it brass? Yeah, or? it's brass. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's real brass, but it's um, but it's um, it's certainly brass coloured. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all signature Marshall stuff, and it's really nice. Is it still at the reduced price today? Yeah, it is. That's the black one. The brown one though is two hundred and sixty. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. So that's that's the proper price. That's the price I paid, two hundred and eighteen pound ninety nine at the moment, and I'm being offered five months still on that. 
Um, anyway. You could get another one? <laughs> yeah, then they could be stereo. No, they can't, because you can't twin them. So it, it's, it's really basic mm. in, in all those smart ways. It's ever so basic. It's not designed to be a, a modern kind of, you know, all singing, all dancing, Bluetooth, does everything, washes up for you. This is a, a traditional kind of Marshall speaker in most ways. Yeah, a good old-fashioned, unconnected yeah. speaker. Yeah. Which which does have Bluetooth for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I don't often yeah. use oh, it with Bluetooth. That's pretty good. Yeah. I suppose you could, whenever you're doing a phone call, you, you could put the sound out through the, the the speaker and then just have the phone microphone working. Oh, by plugging in a cable between the speaker and the phone? Uh, Can you not output your sound through Bluetooth or does the microphone automatically default to Bluetooth when you do that? Um, I, no, I don't think you can because it will. It, you, you're, you, yeah, you, you'd lose the microphone. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Just thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's um, it's not for that. That's not what I want it for. I want it for what it's good at, and it, and it's good at that. Aye, aye. And it looks <laughs> the biz too. Yeah. Awesome. Next, you're going to get an electric guitar and plug it in. <laughs> No, no, right. you can't well, plug anything. Um, oh, yes, you can. Um, well, yeah, uh, there's not. As long top, as you've got, well, that, that you see that that three point five millimeter um, aux at the top is what comes in from my computer. But you'd, if you were going to plug a guitar into it, I, I think you'd probably blow the speakers in it. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, but but you'd need to kind of ramp it down from six and a half or wherever it is to three and a half to get it in, wouldn't you? True. True. But yes. yeah, you could do that, I suppose. Right. All right. Well, uh, Matt Jones has uh, has written in by a conversation that I don't quite remember us having last on the last show. But Ted, do you want to take it away? Because you will. You mentioned it apparently. I think we talked about it on the last show, or was it on? No, it wasn't on PSC, was it? Deconvert might have been on PSC. I get confused. Probably. I think Matt's quite an intelligent chap, so I don't think he'd listen to this. He'd only listen to phone show chat. Oh, right. He? Perhaps it's a PSC thing. Perhaps we shouldn't talk about yeah. it here. Um, okay. We were talking somewhere about deconvergence, and the I was I was talking about the um, uh, uh, personal media players like the Fio and the the Sony and all that. And he says, I think well, we did touch on that on the last show because right. I was talking about the I River. Right. Okay. Yes, that's right. We, it was on this show, wasn't it? I think okay. I think you're right on the whole. Um, says uh, Matt Ted. I think sure. I think the whole convergence experiment was great fun, um, and we've taken it a long way. But it's arguably has culminated in the jack of all trades, master of none peak, where the separate components are prevented from reaching their full potential or doing things that might improve their individual capabilities. If doing so doesn't complement the version of the converged device. Try and re- w- hmm. get your head around that that long sentence. If yeah. if you are right, and we start to focus more on standalone products, I think it can be only be a good thing, and certainly more fun for us tech community bods. Um, so yeah, just following up really what we were saying before, and you know what I was just saying about the Marshall speaker. Really, you know, get things that do one thing really really well instead of expecting your mobile phone to just do everything um including making the tea because actually a tea maker is a better way of making tea well then a kettle that can make tea and coffee and pot noodles Mm. and porridge exactly if you make it with water as opposed to milk yes well yeah i think it, it kind of really has since, well, it makes me think of whenever I was thinking of convergent devices, I instantly think of the old hi fives that you used to get back in the eighties uh, that were really uh, jack of all trades, masters of nothing. They were just wooden boxes that had a bunch of components jammed in and made to look a wee bit sexier on the outside, um, and they, they usually featured pretty crap uh, internals. Um, whereas if you wanted you know, to build yourself a hi-fi, you, you go out and you source the exact CD player that you want, yeah. the exact mini disc player. And, and and for the likes of, uh, I'll, I'll throw a name out there because I've been watching Tech Moon recently uh, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to upgrade my little hi-fi system that I have with a couple of unique components that I want to put in. 
because my <laughs> it's not able to get radio anymore, which is a bit annoying. The antenna seems to have died somehow, and I've had it out for repair, and they can't do anything about it. A couple of capacitors have blown somewhere in it, and they're not able to actually fix it anymore, which is a bit sad. Okay. So I have to replace that, which is a bit... Because it, it had needles and all that kind of stuff on the front. It was great. Proper um, proper graphical interface type thing. But, uh, yeah, it, it's time for a bit of an overhaul on that because, you know, that's what you need. And being able to bring in little bits and pieces and be able to pick and choose and work out ways of connecting this bit of hardware to that bit of hardware to get the best out of what you have and what's available to you at the time with the features that you actually want. Um, but yes, no, he, he, Matt's quite right with everything that he says there, and and I hope that it all comes back. Um, we, I think we we touched on it with I was talking about the Samsung Galaxy S twenty four last week, and uh, the the camera in it is superb, uh, but it, it would still be nice. And I'm, I'm I know we're going to be talking about it later on uh, for for even just compact cameras to really come back to market so that you can rely on it rather than relying on your phone whenever you're away on holiday or on a day out and maybe you don't need to take a whole bulky digital slr with you yeah. it makes me think there was a there was an episode of was it top gear or the grand tour where the three of them had to go and take pictures of animals in i don't know colombia or bolivia or somewhere like that and james may had a wee compact camera and uh Jeremy Clarkson had the the biggest camera you could find with the largest zoom lens that he could barely carry. And then Richard Hammond had a camera with all kinds of different lenses and macro lenses and ring lights and flashes and things. And he spent more time trying to get the appropriate hardware onto his camera. And James May was just standing there happily snapping pictures of a of a bear whilst they weren't as amazing as some of the pictures that they could have achieved from the other cameras, um, it, it was still just the easiest point and shoot. Mm -hmm. And that can sometimes just be the best thing for most people. Um, and and it, it means they don't have to rely on their, their phone and then their phone backing up their pictures and them going off to various different cloud services and things. So it, it all gets really complicated. But uh, I think the, at least we need that one stepping stone of the digital compact camera coming back, and we'll be coming back to that. Yeah, yeah, after we've got I a couple of stories um, a bit later about that whole thing and how the world is changing, perhaps back the other way, haven't we? Yes, yes. So, um, our, our scheduled banter thing is actually about something that is a wee bit kind of linked into that. I, I was trying in my ramble there to find a way but instead, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just, you know, pave the way with a bit of a blab. Just say it. Um, so, <laughs> what we're going to talk about this week is is uh, image viewers for Windows, um, because well, you, you get one. There's, I, I think it's called, was it Microsoft Picture Viewer or something like that? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've used it. But I suppose it's all right. It'll help you if you're in a bind. It's there for for the inexperienced to use. But I thought I'd ask Ted. Ted, what do you use whenever you're you're actually manipulating and playing with images on your computer? Do you stick with the standard Microsoft one? No, I, I'm, I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Isn't it just called Photos or Photo? Um, I think it changes with every update. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I have used for the last 241 years that that same 241 years. Um, Irfan view. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I got it from. I don't know who put me onto it, but um, I stumbled into it. It's a free, open source um, uh, image viewer, and you know whatever else you want it to be, really. And it it supports hundreds of code, you know, um, different um, f f formats of file, um, and you can download it for free. And it's just the one that I've always used. Um, and you can manipulate images. It's, it's starting. They're starting to work with kind of clever stuff now of um, 
getting you know AI based stuff, but I mean it's not really about that. It's about resizing stuff and reformatting stuff and reducing the size and increasing the size and doing whatever you want with it, um, changing the colours. There's a huge palette of um, you know effects and the, the, quite often when I'm trying to blur something to put online, I go into the emboss and the blur settings on Airfan View and and just you know obliterate what and, and I, I I know there are other ways of doing this one of which you're going to come to in a minute um, uh, a lot of the stuff you can just do on the phone you can do it inside Google Photos blah 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 but I just on my com- when I'm sat in front of my computer my go to is just always Irfan View and it has been for a long time and it just works when you first set it up it asks you um, if you want to make it your default image viewer for any files um, extensions and I always just say yes to that so any image that I deal with just goes straight into Earthbound View um, uh, you can say no to that or you can say um, only certain ones you can pick and choose them but I just as I say I do the whole lot and it works really well so I don't feel the need really to, to change that and you know kudos to them for all these years keeping it going for presumably a bunch of volunteers there doesn't appear to be oyster is as I say, it doesn't appear to be a way of donating perhaps it's about time I did donate in that case because um, mm. um, yeah there is a donate button there I will do that today and give them a fiver good call good call nice to hear someone doing that as well yeah yeah, um, I, I I have used it in the past, um, but you know I was thinking back to all the the different names that have been used over the years that have I've sort of moved from uh, image viewer to image viewer, and I suppose it, it's more important to point out that we're kind of talking about image viewers as opposed to image editing facilities, you know, like you know, Photoshop or whatever, or or those sorts of things. It's just, you you know, whenever you, you download a picture or you, you have a picture in an email and you want to open it and just have a quick look at it, um, Google, fo- or, uh, well, the Windows Photos thing is pretty good for just opening something up. Um, but if you need to do something that's a wee bit more than that, maybe very light image editing or, or rotating or resizing or something like that, just quickly on the fly, um, it can it can start to get a bit gnarly with Windows Photos um, application that that is used by default. I use a thing called Image Glass, uh, which was recommended to me um, by I think it was basically Reddit um, years ago, and it is a paid thing. There was a, there's a free one and then there's paid, um, and I I went ahead and bought it, and it comes out of the Microsoft Store, so it downloads and updates through that. I just find it to be a, a good, robust uh, option that I I like a lot of the little features that they've thrown in. Um, there's there's a wee toolbar across the top. It it doesn't look as dated as Irfan View. Um, although in saying that, I'm only judging that from the, the screenshots that are on Irfan View's website. I have downloaded Irfan View and I'm going to give it a go this week. But um, it, it seems to be just a bit more kind of up to date and in keeping with uh, with Windows 10 and 11's looks, um, as opposed to Windows 3.1. Um, but this, I think it's just a, a really nice little graphical interface uh, with some typical tools that you might need uh, to hand, you know, rotates and things like that at the top and resizing. And, uh, and you can just do what you need uh, really quickly. Yep. And it it's it responds in a flash. You know, you open an image and it just pew, it's there. You don't have to wait for it, uh, which I have experienced in what was it AC uh, ACDC I was using for a while, and uh, opening an image on that was was you know time consuming. You have to wait maybe seven or eight seconds for it to open. So quickly going through a bunch of images could be a long haul unless you kept it open in the background but uh, yeah I, I, I do recommend Image Glass I, I don't know that I'll use it forever I could try Orphan View now that you've recommended it and suddenly decide no this is for me uh, but no uh, Image Glass is a, is a good one it's a bit like um, the Marshall speaker really Orphan View just does one thing really well and 
you know, mm-hmm. don't expect it to do more. Is there any image glass? I don't know how um, long ago it was that you said you, there's a paid version, but I can't. There seems to be. It says it's um, open source and it's got lots of buttons to support them and donate, but there's not. I can't find anywhere where it says buy a version. So perhaps that's oh, changed. Okay. Maybe, maybe they've shifted away from the pay for a version bit, um, and it's looking for donations instead. Right, okay, that's interesting. I'll just have a look at it on Microsoft Store. Um, see if there's a receipt of how much I paid for it. I think it was like eight quid or something. I oh, think. well, maybe doing it through the Microsoft Store is different. But I'm looking at the link you put into the show, the recording notes, and down the, yeah. down the bottom of the page there, it's all about help us by donating, not paying. Yeah. Right, okay. I, I think I... There was a trial, or I had the free version, and maybe the free version doesn't have the most of the editing tools that are that are just there. But I, I, I was using it quite a lot, so I figured I'd pay the eight quid or whatever it was because it wasn't much. I think that I think there are um, instances like that. In if you get it from the store, it's money. But if you don't, then you obviously you don't get the protection from the Microsoft Store of things going wrong. But yeah. There might be other ways of getting it where you, with, with a different kind of structure or... Uh, yes, I've forgotten what I'm saying now. <laughs> well, I think the Microsoft uh, Store keeps it up to date um, right, in the okay. background without bothering you. Okay. And also they Which take their cut. Welcome. Uh, so it's probably yeah. a fiver plus three quid yeah, for Microsoft probably. Store. Yeah, okay, got yeah. you. Yeah. Anyway... Very good, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, some nice tools out there. And I'm sure that for the two that we've picked out there, our listeners will say, ah, yeah, there's this one, this one, this one, this one. And that, that there's loads of these windows. This is one of the nice things about um, Windows is that historically there's just so much out there. There's so many tools to do different things with. It's a, a veritable playground. <laughs> it is indeed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, well, actually, I wanted to raise um, a little thing. I'll start with this. Um, Google News, right? I, I, I'm really hacked off with Google News. It's it's a lovely thing to have on your phone. It's very useful just to be able to swipe in from the side and see the headlines that are kind of catered for you. But whenever you click on a news article, it, you have to go through that bloody European we value your privacy thing. You know, the, the GDPR and cookies and all that kind of stuff. And you have to agree. And Google News doesn't remember what you've said before. So if you're clicking on the same website, um, say your local Telegraph or something like that, and there's three stories in a row that you want to read there, it'll ask you that damn question every damn time rather than you having to go to their website where you go through Chrome, you read the, the story, it remembers that you've done this. Instead, you have to get, you have to agree to their terms or or not agree, and click through each time. It's a real pain in the ass. Do you notice this? Well, first of all, I'd just like to say that there's a difference between swiping right to get to the Google feed and oh yeah, actually yeah. using the Google News um, uh, app because the, the Google News app is much better, I think, than swiping right. If you swipe right to the Google feed, it's littered with bloody adverts. Every third entry on there, Google have just have got sponsored adverts, and it's that that bit's really annoying. Um, but anyway, um, my, uh, my annoyance uh, with uh, Google News is that these stories are just so badly curated that they're... Uh, they're, they're wildly out of date very often. They they try mm-hmm. they tr- it, it, the system tries to learn from your behaviour and algorithms and all the rest of it, and it just doesn't learn very well. It doesn't do it properly. Um, every time I look at a story in Google News, the first thing I do is check to see what date it is and that it's not six months old that someone's written it, or three months old, or two years old, and there's no chronological order to it. This is exactly why i use um um inno reader an rss reader because i you know i know then that the feed comes through with stories that have just been released and you can kind of manage your way through it i only use google news as a kind of secondary backup to just make sure that putin's not sent a bomb across or something um (laughs) 
six months ago. Six, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, Google News, I just don't think they get it right. And when you tell Google News that you're not interested in a topic, for example, I constantly tell Google News that I'm not interested in the bloody royal family or <laughs> who's shagging who in Parliament. And it's just like, oh, leave me alone. I don't want to know about these celebrity gossip crap, including the royal family. But still, up it pops, comes into my feed still, and i got to tell it again. It doesn't seem to learn properly from what I tell it and what I feed back. I'm just constantly yeah. doing it. So um, in that respect, yeah, I think that my RSS um, news feed reader is a much better option for me, and I use that day in, day out. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just going through the Google News app now to see if I can find stories on the same websites um, so that I can overcome this cookies thing. And I, th I do actually think that maybe that might be working, but the one on the side, Payne doesn't, or Google Today or Google Now or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's different. It's the, yeah, they, they do it differently. But if they opened that through Chrome, surely Chrome would remember. No, because it uses its own, it uses its own viewer, doesn't it? You're not opening it in Chrome. It's opening in yeah. the, the the Google Feed Viewer or something. Because in the, the in Chrome you can install add-ons that remove ads and things like that. Can you? Uh, well, I, I, what on a phone? I I couldn't find one. Oh no, that's Mozilla. I'm thinking of right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, right. Well, so Google News is a bit of a thumbs down at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you you need to be really careful if you use it. That particularly that your what you're reading is not a year out of date, and you get all excited about something and then realise what date it was, and then go bar, bar, bar. Do a sheep impression. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. I see. And apparently, Royal Mail have delivered. They they rang the doorbell. Hmm. I can see that now, but I did not get any notification to say that they rang the doorbell. Getting really annoyed with doorbells mm. at the moment. I, I've got two, and I've I've interchanged them, and I'm not getting notifications. Have you got something exciting arriving, like a Marshall speaker? <laughs> no, it's it's <laughs> coffee crisps and things from Amazon. Yeah. Toilet roll, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exciting stuff. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, let's move into the news because it appears that one of uh, one of my favourite social networks has um, well, it did the dirty on us last year, and this year it looks like it's going to be doing even dirtier. And that's that Reddit has now become a publicly trading company. Which uh, Ted, you can explain to us what does that actually mean no, for me, the average user? <laughs> I can't explain it at all. It, it, a bit like I, I saw this pop up in MeWe, believe it or not, this week. There was a big thing notification that popped up in MeWe in my feed, in my notification feed, and it said you can now buy shares in MeWe, and it was offering to if if I gave them a hundred dollars or up to. What was it up to? $5,000 or something? And you could buy a bunch of shares from MeWe. So I, I, I did wonder, I forgot to mention this actually, I did wonder if MeWe is, gonna, is getting into a bit of trouble because they're selling themselves off. Um, but uh, this high finance stuff, I really don't understand, Gareth. Reddit um, has always been presumably run by volunteers and free source, but they've they decided that it's so incredibly... Um, popular and um, it, it, it's a it's a uh, uh, it has a, a huge value that someone's going to make money out of this. But if you read this article, it says that the stockholders. So it, has it already got stockholders? I suppose it must have. This we need someone that understands high finance to, to interpret this really. But it says Reddit itself wouldn't see any of this money that they're going to get from the sale of this thing, which is approximately. Um, five hundred million dollars, but why is Reddit itself not seeing any of it? I no, I I don't really know. Um, the IPO price values Reddit at just under six point five billion dollars. So even though that it's only they're only looking for five hundred million, it's apparently worth six point five billion dollars. Just amazing. Well, you see, Reddit is. Um is essentially a, a capitalist wet dream. Uh, Reddit 
doesn't have a paid workforce other than the people who work in the, the back end of the website. Right. Uh, all the, the moderators of Reddit are unpaid people yeah. who, who do it because they want to do it. Yeah. So they've got an unpaid workforce that they don't have to worry about. So no one on Reddit will actually make any money out of this. It's only the people who own Reddit and the back end people who look after it will will earn money out of the changes that they made. What moderators kind of did before, and, and the, the only people who were making money out of Reddit uh, up until a point last year was that they were making th- third party apps that uh, could show their own could could show ads for the app developers. And uh, Reddit went, hang on a second, they're making money out of Reddit, um, where we're, where Reddit's not making money. So Reddit decided to charge for access for an app to be able to pull the information out of Reddit. Sure. So a large amount of those apps all disappeared. Um, and, and I think there's a couple of, of paid apps that are still there that you have to pay a monthly subscription so that they can cover that that cost to reach into Reddit to get the information. So who are the stockholders then? Because this, the way this reads, it seems that the, if you are putting your stocks up for sale for the first time, it says that it's already got stockholders. I, yeah, I, I just don't understand. No, that that that's that's beyond me um, entirely. I, I don't don't know where that where the, this whole setup is because for me, I thought that it was it was already. You know, they had it's it's not. I don't I don't know. I'm not going to attempt to bluff my way or anything on this um, because I don't understand. But where um, th- this is going forward, Reddit is now pulling in considerable money from their own advertising, so they can they can uh, push that back to the stockholders. But it means that going forward, we're probably going to see a, a larger amount of advertising on Reddit uh, to appease those. What, what are you odd owing? Can you hear me still? Yep. Oh, right, okay. Um, to appease those uh, shareholders. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More adverts. Everything's run on adverts. But, but Apart Reddit from Wikipedia. A, well, it, Reddit. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Uh, but whenever you do something like, um, if I wanted to, I, I did it this morning where I was typing in best image viewers 2024. And you, you put it into Google and you get Google trying to sell you things, you know, go yeah. go here to buy this one and that one. And, and, and all these clickbaity articles going, yeah, we've, we've cured it the best, uh, the best image viewers from ACDC's website. And Shockingly, ACDC is the number one image viewer that you could buy today for a reduced amount. Yeah. So if you add in Reddit at the end of that search, you'll get actual human pe- beings talking about what is the best image viewer and people recommending stuff. So sticking in Reddit at the end of any search yeah. actually gives you human discussions about what you need to know. Which is why it's so powerful. Well, it is, but if if that was to start to change, mm-hmm. if people were to stop using Reddit because it is so ad-ridden and plagued with all that kind of gunk, then we're in trouble. <laughs> we're in trouble for a, a foreseeable future until such a thing comes along that uh, that that can that can do what Reddit is currently doing now. Because you get that that kind of problem. Um, whenever a social network kind of goes down and people start leaving it in droves, like whenever Facebook and Twitter at the time um, started annoying all of their users and they all split off and went into different areas and you realise that your friends were, some of them were on this social network, some of them were on that social network. Uh, whenever WhatsApp changed uh, their their policy, I came off WhatsApp with a, a, a bunch of other people and we kind of moved to Signal and Telegram and it was kind of a no man's land. There were some people who persisted in using WhatsApp and it became really hard for people to actually settle down and go, look, this is the one, this is the best form of communication between each peop- each of the people. Um, and, and Reddit is actually sitting there as up on the throne as one of the best ways to get information and to interact with other people who are interested in something that you are wanting to find out information of or are interested in yourself. So tipping that balance going forward, 
there's there's alarm bells sounding that that Reddit may stop being as good as it has been. Whenever they made this app change and you had to move away from your favorite Reddit app to either using the official Reddit app or using the website more frequently on your on your mobile device, and um, that that was a, a big change that. I really was annoyed with because I liked, I used Bacon Reader on my Android device and it was fantastic. I knew that app inside out. I had it all set up the way I wanted to and Reddit was just a breeze to flip through and communicate with and, and share your advice and, and seek advice from. Now it's it's problematic, it's difficult, you miss things and and you've, you've got ads to contend with and promoted posts and things that, that bleed their way through that you accidentally click on thinking, oh, that looks like, oh, no, no, it's not. It's not what I was looking for. Before you know it, you've been duped. Yeah. Do you use Reddit? I do, Much? yeah. I use it very regularly. And I do that um, that search trick that you you, you suggested. I, I've, I've been doing that for some time now. Um, but it, it's like anything. When it, whenever anything is worth anything, someone's out there to try and make money from it. Um, which is why it's interesting. The example I threw in just now about um, Wikipedia, how they've completely... It, I, well, I think it's, I'm right in saying they've completely stuck to their original brief and it's all run by volunteers and it's, there's, there's no danger of anyone stockholding or selling it out or whatever. Um, now maybe I'm naively wrong about that, um, but it seems to me that the, the model of... N- people doing stuff for nothing run by a bunch of volunteers are gone and whenever something is big and and popular enough someone's going to find some way of monetizing it and surely yeah. you know um, clearly um reddit is is because everyone well not everyone but certainly most people in the tech crowd um across the world know that reddit's the place to go for all sorts of things i don't know if reddit's the kind of place i've never used reddit for anything apart from techie stuff do you oh yeah yeah it's, it's very useful for everything you know when um, i i follow the northern ireland one and the belfast oh, one okay. and, yeah, um, I knew about the charges against Jeffrey Donaldson before anyone else on Thursday. You know, it, it, it's one of those things that. Uh, so, it, so if you, it, it arrives there if you, quicker than I see even Twitter. So, if he wants to, if he wants to get a review for a film or a TV show, you could just do that in Reddit, could you as well? Someone will be writing oh, yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Search for the film name, and and there'll be a bunch of people talking about it. You'll just get simple responses like a shit or it's good <laughs> yeah 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 but but I've, I've i've always just associated reddit with tech and not with anything else i shall start using it differently yeah yeah tech and if you need bikini pictures there's plenty of <laughs> bikini <laughs> yes all right um to create those bikini pictures some people tend to use things called cameras yeah, nice link. there are cameras that are not in your phone but there are cameras that you can buy over the shop front that doesn't actually exist you can buy from amazon and to add to the amount of cameras that are available nikon are throwing the old cool pics brand back into the mix here <laughs> uh, because they've noticed that the nikon cool pics is Sales have soared by over 8,000%. So they went from selling one a year to 8,000 in a year. Um, And they are little cameras that do everything that your phone does, but better. Ted, they're not making, they're they're not still making these, surely. Um, I think they're bringing them back, isn't it? I didn't read it like that. I, I read this article that it was the eBay were kind of selling them. Um, because the kids, the kids, uh, d- have decided that non-convergence is the way to go, and they want to have particularly pink. It seems pink um, cameras <laughs> um, are, are soaring in sales, apparently. Um, and I think the eight thousand uh, thing you quoted is eight thousand percent, which has the the demand for this um particular model which is the Nikon Coolpix S6900 um has commanded and the yeah the, the, I think the bottom line is that is it's going back to the story about non convergence and they put a little infographic in in this story that we've linked to in Tech Radar which shows 
the most in demand retro tech Motorola Razor, um, for example, the, not not the new one, but the the original one, and this Nikon Coolpix and Samsung flip phones, the iPod Nano. Um, I, I, I think I said on the last show, I've got an iPod Classic here, which presumably at some point will be worth some money. There's a Sony Walkman, Nintendo DS. I've got a Nintendo DS XL here, so that'd be worth some money. Um, but I think, yeah, I, this is following up on what we were saying earlier, really, is that, that it turns out that these whether it's new or or second hand or whatever it is or eBay or or Nikon getting in in on the action again um that the these things are beginning to sell and people are beginning to want them again a bit like you went through really when you ordered a box full of about 35 Canon cameras <laughs> 35 35 <laughs> I think you find that's a bit low and and they all, they all, all now have been shoved in your in your loft and you never looked at them twice um, no, no, they're they're over there <laughs> in in a box under that sofa. Um, yeah, no, I I, I did I, I I pushed to do this as well uh, a couple of years ago. I think it was COVID, was it not? When I was really bored, right? Um, and I I bought a large amount of old digital cameras. Yeah, uh, and I think I have about a hundred of them now. Wow. Um, and I'd say that at least four of them are good. Yep. Uh, I I I was going to put together a little video series for YouTube, like, is it better than a smartphone? How does it weigh up against a smartphone? But the the results were pretty dreadful. It wasn't even, you know, I, I couldn't make any form of recommendation other than four of those cameras that were quite good, and one of them was unfortunately quite broken, but the pictures were quite good. Uh, and I went looking to see if I could get one with a I think it was the screen's broken on the back and also the battery doesn't work particularly well. Uh, to get a new version of that, that, it was still like 200 quid or a newer, better version of it. So the, the they did hold their value a good bit. But I had seen an article saying that Nikon Coolpixes were coming back and that's what I thought we were covering right. here. Well, perhaps I, they I are, yeah. Up my... Um, perhaps they are, but the, I think this uh, this particular article is is not so much about that. It's just about the principle of them. The kids are getting on board with this, and they. I I've got a theory which I posted with this story in the MeWe group this week, and my theory is that everyone is bored with the plateau of smartphones. Um, so smartphones, as we know, have have kind of gone through an evolutionary process over the last 15 years. And they've got to a point now where changes are... I mean, look what Samsung do with the model by model. OK, we've got AI at the moment that's coming in, fair enough. But up until then, models are just tweaked. And Sony do the same thing with the Xperia line. That Each model is just so tiny, a tiny bit different to the last one. And I think that the that people are bored with that. And they want a pink digital camera even though technically the photographs might not be as superior these days they don't care they just want to be able to use a different bit of tech something a a bit like using record players and cassette players and walkmans Mm. it's something different and i think people are just bored with samey samey smartphones that was my theory well i I did a quick search through my history and i found what it was and tech radar had had done a a post about how Pentax were bringing back the. Oh uh, yes, that's right. I saw that. The uh, compact camera with yeah. the Espino Mini, or something and it's like a, that. and it's a half frame, isn't it? Might be. yeah. I'm sure. I'm I sure it was. Guess. It wasn't a 35 millimeter. It was a half frame camera. I'm sure it was. I don't see them say that anymore. Okay. Well, um, but it, it, it's it's the logical progression because they had Polaroid suddenly come back. It was a couple of years ago, and uh, all the kids were into that until they realized that the price of film was astronomically expensive for that, and they couldn't really yeah. waste their pictures. And they wanted to go out and take pictures in the pub or wherever they happened to be down on the beach, and realizing they were, you know, it was what, £10 for, for 10 exposures. And then you get some of them wasted, and they're tiny as well. They're not as big as they used to be. Uh, so, yeah, the next logical step is to look for the compact camera. 
And they'll probably buy some of these, go out, take a few pictures of it, and go, no, my phone's better. <laughs> and then eventually dump them, and they'll end up in a box under my sofa. But their phone isn't pink. Um, that's true, but they can get a pink <laughs> cover for it. Um, until the companies just do start pushing out um, new compact cameras, uh, ones that, that the kids are going to want to have, pink ones, and with flip-up screens and... Yeah groovy bits there's there's quite a nice one as well from uh rico r-i-c-o-h what, the grx the gr3 or whatever it is they're really expensive no the se2 se2 rico se2 i'll see if that is actually what it's called that's just what i'm looking at in front of the camera r-i-c-o-h se2 uh yeah if you look up google images you'll see lots of pictures of it okay oh maybe it's I think I'm right in saying that the GR is the only one that Rico currently sell, and that's really expensive. Uh, um, that's an old one as well. Yeah. Okay, so I've just looked up um, compact cameras on Amazon to see what's currently for sale, and there's <laughs> there's tons and tons and tons of them, really quite cheap, but no brand names. All of them are Chinese no names like Hoyancy, Hoyancy. Ah. And, Oh, a, uh, hang on a minute, there's a Kodak one, a Kodak Ektar. Ooh, no, I bought one of Kodak's ones <laughs> recently. Or, well, they sent one to me a couple of years ago. I've got it in the shed because that's the best <laughs> place for it. It was worse than yeah. the ones that I got off of eBay. Oh, yeah, the, the Ricoh WG. I've got a WG somewhere. It's a it, That's a, a all-weather thingy. Oh, no, it's not. It's an Olympus. I've got an Olympus all-weather camera in a drawer somewhere. Um, but anyway, yeah, Sony, if you want to buy a Sony, then you're up in price because they're, they're more expensive, obviously. But there are, there, there are tons and tons of compact cameras for sale. It's just that they're Chinese no-name ones. Yeah. Well, I think of, of my experience of all those 100 cameras that I have there, the one that I actually keep in my bag... I took it with me. I haven't used it very much at all. Uh, but the one that impressed my socks off was uh, Panasonic Lumix DMC TZ something, TZ8, I think it is. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a lovely little camera. The, the pictures are pretty good. They, they're they not as good as you'll get off your smartphone. But it's still just nice to be able to take it out. It's slow, though. That was the one thing I don't like about it, is that it, the operating system is quite slow. So flipping from feature to feature, you're waiting. It's almost like it's kind of tired. It feels, it feels like it's done its day's work, and it's, it's looking to go home and sit on the couch. It's, oh, no, do I have to go over to this mode now? Um, whenever you yeah. take the picture, it's like, right, that's been done. I'm just going to store it on the memory card now. Okay. I'll be ready for you in uh, maybe twelve <laughs> seconds. Okay, um, so it's it's it is a bit. The, the, it's a drug. The, other, the other thing, buying a second hand camera is, of course, the, how knackered the battery is if it's a rechargeable. What you want to do really is find one with AAs or AAA batteries, so that the battery thing is not a, a, a big issue. Um, well, for that Panasonic, I went off and, and bought a new battery for it. Um, because you can buy them, I think it was even through Amazon, okay. and it was four pounds or something. Um, and that was the original Panasonic. I think they still make the batteries. Oh right, okay, well, that's good. Or it might, it might be new old stock or something, but it, it was fine, absolutely fine. Mm. Anyway, it's not just about cameras. It's it's also about other tech, um, retro tech. You know, like like I said, Walkmans and 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 <laughs> Ted. Eh? We're an hour into the podcast, oh and we've only handled the first two. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on. Okay, uh, three have seen the average mobile user uh, data usage has gone up to 30 gigabytes. Believe that one. I had a bit of a story about oh, this, sorry. but... <laughs> um, well, actually, because I upgraded my phones recently, uh, the uh, Vodafone had, did an analysis of how much data we were using, and I had 200 gigabytes on each phone contract before. My wife, on average, was using about 3 gigabytes a month. I was using, on average, about 14 gigabytes a month. It's like, right, okay, so we now have 50 gigabyte bundles. <laughs> That's about all. And I think the reason for mine being a wee bit higher was because one month, whenever I accidentally cut through Virgin's uh, cable that was going under the, oh, the hedge, yeah, yeah. 
I had no internet for a good few days. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to put it all through my phone. Yeah. Um, and that kind of brought up my average. But yeah, where you see these deals that people are being sold 300 gigabytes at 40 pounds a month as opposed to 100 gigabytes at 30 pounds a month. Yeah, the, the average is an awful lot less unless you're doing what Ted Salmon does. I've got a theory about okay. this um, 3 UK hitting 30 gigabytes, and it's a theory based on what I observe. Since I've been doing my steps and walking for health, I see so many people out and about using, by default, their phone to do video calling. They, they're, they're walking around the street with the phone in front of them, just doing um, presumably WhatsApp or FaceTime or whatever it's called, Instead of doing a voice call with people, they're just by default mm. doing a video call. And that's what I think people are using all their data for, because that's what they're doing. Yeah, well, you, you see it an awful lot in the movies. Um, yeah. I, I've only ever done it once with one person. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it happens all the time in the movies. So um, I think people want to do that as well, where they see it in the latest TV show. Yep. They have to be doing it too. Yep. So I think that's probably a part of the growing use of, of data, certainly. Yeah. So um, speaking of uh, of bikini pictures once again, X is going to be working on a not safe for work communities uh, to to keep their triple X content <laughs> uh, sidelining it. Essentially, I'm I'm hoping that this is going to be because it does tend to bleed into your feed. Uh, whether someone that you're following likes it or someone follows you that is maybe X-rated or something like that, you you tend to, to see it. You don't use Twitter that much, do you? Do you see I don't, no. naughty stuff? I, I don't. Very I often. hardly use Twitter at all. I only, only go there once a week to see if anyone's left me a message. So, no, I'm the worst person to to ask, really. Can you? Is it? Well, the, the word is though from Elon Musk. I think is that he's he's try, just trying something else to get people back on there, and this could be one way of doing it. I, it, it sounds like a disaster waiting to happen to me, doesn't it? You? Well, yeah, but and, and yes and no. Um, I, I'd say that certainly something has to be done about it. It's it's a massive part of the users that are on X, and I think as people gradually exit x and um, they it, it becomes a, a larger share where you know sort of only fans and things like that they they tend to advertise their latest video on various different social networks so instead of banning it and stopping it he's looking to try and find a new avenue for them to go down so that the the not safe for work stuff still exists for those who want it because we've seen with tumblr whenever tumblr removed all porny stuff that 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 died that nobody used it and then whenever only fans said that they were not going to do any more hardcore stuff or something like that um you know they they were at risk of going bankrupt over the weekend because people were like oh hang on a second everyone on only fans wants to leave okay but um yeah so Elon has obviously seen that and decided, right, okay, well, we can't alienate everyone, uh, otherwise we'll have no one left. So uh, let's let's try and create some sort of uh, sideline to be able to push that into, where if you're not interested in it, you're not going to see it. But if you are, yeah, it's over there. A yeah. bit like an adult shop in a, in a, in, in a shopping centre. You know, it'll be behind closed doors and smoked windows and things. It's there if you need it. The, bl the, the, if you need the it. black shop front. I used to, when I lived in London, I used to see these black shop fronts, <laughs> and they were oh, done in Soho or yeah, something. Yeah, all like sorts that. of places. All, all over London, they were, you could just see these black shops, and you knew exactly what they were. They typically had a a, a a sign outside saying <laughs> "Private Shop." <laughs> oh right, okay. Ah. It was quite funny. Yeah, so he's looking to do that, and I think that that is kind of sensible. Um, whenever he, you don't want your social network to cope. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll see. Well, moving on into the hard line for the hardware. There we go, that's an R. Um, Microsoft has announced its March Surface event. 
God, I just about got through that head, uh, headline without falling asleep. <laughs> Ted, is there anything exciting there? Um, Please tell me there is. There's, there's two things of note, apart from um, the accessibility stuff. So they've got these uh, adaptive accessories. Actually, the adaptive accessories are possibly the more interesting thing going on here. If you scroll down in the page, you can see that they've got these six different devices that are helping people mm. with disabilities. But actually, some of them are kind of designed as being useful for people without disabilities, the likes of us, um, I, I, I guess. I mean, you could be disabled, I don't know. We've never discussed it. Um, but, the, but, you know, things with big buttons on and, and um, things that have got, a, like a mouse that's got a, um, a, a, a thumb rest on it, which you can move either side, an old-fashioned joystick instead of a, a thumb wheel for people that have got... Um, you know, limited use of their, their, their fingers. A mouse that's more like a, a, a box than a mouse-shaped device. And um, th- th- there's just some interesting stuff going on with these adaptive accessories, I think. Much more interesting than the Laptop 6 and the um, the, um, the, the the Surface Pro 10. The, the, the mm. Laptop 6 and the Surface Pro 10 are actually business devices. Um, the Pro 10 is an update to the Pro 9, obviously, and they've got a new chipset in it, and they've got the AI neural processing unit in it, and, um, you know, they've upped the RAM and stuff, but essentially it's not that different from the previous model. Um, The Laptop 6... Um, is kind of a bit more interesting, but it's not well, so well specified. There is a 16-inch version of it available, though, um, and you can so you can buy a kind of quite big one. But the um, yeah, it's got the same new chip 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 set and the um, neural processing unit and blah blah. blah. You can get a 13.5-inch um, version of it as well. Um, yeah, they're very nice, but they're built for business. There's another. Um, device sorry there's another um microsoft event coming up shortly i can't remember when it is where they are going to be touting these two models slightly differently spec for consumers so this this event was very much about business use and it looks like um adaptability for accessories for people with disabilities uh so yeah kind of interesting evolutionary changes for their hardware but Really, that's about it. There was another story related to this, though, whereby Windows, um, sorry, Microsoft are going to force um, PC manufacturers to add a co-pilot key. So all mm. of this new hardware that Microsoft are pushing out um, has got a co-pilot key, and they're they're going headlong into this. And I don't know with what is that instead of the Windows button? No, no, it's as well as it's on the right. It's that they're asking people to put it on the right hand side of the space bar, which presumably is going to replace the right hand Alt button or Function button or something. I don't know. I've got a different which keyboard. Which is useful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I I don't know with what power they're going to force manufacturers to do this. Uh, whether they're going to say, well, if you don't, you can't use Windows. I don't know, but um, they're, they're saying, yeah, from now on, you've got to have a co-pilot key, and that's what we're into, and that's what you must do. A bit like Chromebooks, I guess, with the um, with the Gemini key eventually, and the, the all the, the the world's gone AI mad. <laughs> has indeed, certainly has. Um, yeah, that, that, I don't think that's going to go down too well with well with most people, actually. Um, some people do use that right alt. It comes in very handy from time oh, to no, time. Oh, no, it's not the alt, is it? There's a picture there, if you click through. It's next to the alt. So it's um, it's between the alt and the cursor keys. Well, on that piece of hardware it is. Yeah. Whereas looking at my Logitech keyboard, it'll be where the function yeah, button yeah, sits. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Which you use to be able to press the F1 keys. Yeah. yeah. Well, hmm, yeah, well, I don't know, I don't know. It does, it'll be interesting to see what happens whenever this rules out to, whenever the software that enables this rules out to existing hardware, if it overwrites that button and what the function of that button is. It will indeed. Mm-hmm. Talking of keyboards, um, talking of keyboards. Well, I will <laughs> say about that, uh, the adaptive accessory, oh, yeah, yeah. the middle one there, that wee joystick. That's going to go down well with retro gamers. That just screams out yeah. Atari's original joystick. Yeah, and if you scroll down, there's a um, 
Oh, no, there's not. It's gone. There was, uh, when I looked at this on my phone earlier, I scrolled down and there was a breakdown of each of those six things. Oh, no, I clicked through. If you click through to Adaptive Accessories, just underneath that picture, there you get a breakdown of each one. And if you scroll down on that page, you get an adaptive joystick thingy going on and you can, oh, yeah, yeah. You can see what the, closer, closer up what it's about. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I do. Oh, right. Okay. So you, it, it's a thing that you stick into uh, a, a, just a, a, a square hub so you can swap out yeah. what's on top. It's adaptive. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, moving on. Uh, tell us about the Keys Me Mars 3. No, no. This is you. Is it? You brought this. Did yeah. I? Yeah. I... Oh, it did. Yes, I don't recognise it because it, uh, the the website that I've linked to is different. Ah. Um, this is a pretty cool looking new uh, mechanical keyboard that I happen to notice. It's got a little screen built into it as well, and they're describing it as the ultimate gaming keyboard. It's it's very customizable, where you can do all sorts of things like attach little blaster rockets to the side to make it look a bit more like a, a spaceship as well. Um, you can pop off the keycaps and put on new keycaps. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's got all kinds of stuff going on around it. But the, I think the, the coolest feature is up on the top right, where you, because it's a shorter keyboard, where you might, just above where the backspace might be on your keyboard, um, there there's a small uh, I think it's a TFT display. Oh yeah, it's TFT um, that you can use to show stuff ah. to you, just little bits and pieces. Um, whether it be uh, you know the battery life or your ammunition count, <laughs> or whatever you you happen to to have in the game or just in your day to day life, mm -hmm. it's really quite a groovy looking keyboard and it's pretty sexy too. Especially whenever you consider that there are optional extras that you can click into the side of it. It, it is a wee bit expensive. It's $330 oh, yeah. at the moment. Um, and you can get uh, different keycaps to be able to put on the top to customize it to make it look the way you want. Whether you want the, uh, I think it looks a wee bit Star trek -y with one configuration. Um, and then there's the, the magnetic fidget spinners. Uh, which can go on to the side that you can twiddle with while you're <laughs> talking on a podcast for an hour and 12 minutes, um, which make it look like it's sort of got afterburner -y type things on the side. It's it's just, you know, a little bit of innovation, and I, I quite like it, to be honest. What do you think? Yes, uh, this, is more, this is more retro, isn't it? More retro stuff, you know. It can be. Where, you know, me mechanical keyboards just have the feel of being retro. It's the kind of keyboard I used to use 20 years ago. And I tried really hard to get away from my MX keys, my Logitech MX keys. Um, I, I bought and returned mechanical keyboards. I just, I just find them clunky now. But you can see why people might be drawn to it, particularly something like this. That little screen in the right-hand corner is just genius. Even though it might be a complete gimmick and doesn't really do much and tell you much, um, it might be programmable, I don't know. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I can see people really going for this. I'm not sure about those widget thingies, but... <laughs> <laughs> Twi twiddling things but yeah you can get different keycaps for them all different colors and they've obviously thought this through pretty well i think and they they, they know who they're appealing to with this um it's just that it's really expensive it is yeah yeah but uh, it's that kind of thing that the people who want this will happily pay whatever it's it's wireless uh it can connect via bluetooth or 2.4 gigabytes wireless uh with a dongle what's that you can use a usb type c cable well see the what's that thing that you think might be a wrist rest that's not a screen as well is it or is it just a wrist no rest? no right. it is okay. a wrist rest just with okay. a, a a nice image on okay. it of mars 03 and right space very nice. $330. Yeah, yeah. You could pick one up, couldn't you? Go for it. Ah. Uh, next up is the Yaw Motion Simulator. Now, this is um, <laughs> this is one of those things that uh, I think they'll probably sell two of a year 
but um, it looks really quite cool. It's a virtual reality chair simulator thing that you can <laughs> get into and experience oh, wow. gaming. I've just seen him moving around on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, sticking this into Flight Simulator or Forza or some sort of big car racing game uh, would be top notch um, it, it rotates in various different yeah, ways um, and it's got a VR helmet that works with um, what is it? Oculus Rift, HTC Vive uh, Valve Index and Primax, whatever that is uh, and, and it's just designed to <laughs> react and give you the feedback that you would expect from the game that you're playing. That's fantastic. So that you can throw yourself around corners whenever you're racing down the uh, the, the speedway, or you can uh, fly underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, like in Star Trek Four, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and uh, and it'll make, it'll simulate that, and you're, you're, you you feel the G forces against you as, as it moves. Wow. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and they, they do, they, they level it up. There's all kinds of other versions that you can buy that get bigger and bolder. But the, the standard little Yaw 2 uh, Pro Edition is $3,000 at the moment, ah. um, which which isn't much whenever you think about what it does. Uh, and if you're an absolute diehard for, for gaming, uh, you know, Im- immersive gaming, then... I think that's a small price to pay. Uh, the, the, if the, you go onto YouTube, the aviation sorry. version is fifteen thousand dollars. So, so yeah, could, but that brings up all the <laughs> the actual cockpit type thing with all the dedicated buttons <laughs> for a flight simulator. Wow! Do you know? I, I remember when I was a kid, um, and we used to go to typically. Um, you know, um, these uh, museums, you could get inside one of these space, um, like capsule emulators or flight simulators. And th- th- that would do this. You'd get in there and it, and it was on these huge hydraulic. Do you remember those? Or is it? Bef- I do. Yeah. yeah. These huge hydraulic thingies and you get inside it and it throws you and it, it, it's a real immersive experience. And I went into one of those once when I was a, a kid and I was just flabbergasted. And this looks like it's just the same, only obviously a lot less money to produce on a personal basis at three thousand dollars. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's saying what it is over a podcast doesn't, doesn't quite describe just just how far this thing goes. This has three hundred and sixty degree yaw movement capabilities, which is what they seem to be calling it, um, and it has a forty degree, or it has a roll movement of forty degrees and a pitch movement of seventy degrees. So you you can essentially sit in blast off position in a space shuttle. And, and and go up that way. Whereas I think whenever you talk about these sorts of things, you always imagine that it's just something that sort of rumbles your chair or something. No, but this is a, a proper yeah. um, movement based device that that throws you around all over the place. It, it's worth checking out some of the videos of people actually sitting in it and uh, and reacting. And it moves pretty fast too. You might, can you imagine uh, especially... the electricity bill? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping that it's pneumatic based, um, if anything, and it, it would just draw power as as your computer would. Mm-hmm. But it is terrific looking. It does, uh, yeah. yeah. It, uh, seeing him driving that racing car, it just looks like so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to use it in playing Super Mario, though, Ted, I do have to tell you. That. Uh, very, <laughs> Bit very of a shame. sad. All right. Well, you can tell us about the new Edifier QR65 desktop active monitor speakers. You're, you're a fan of Edifier stuff, aren't you? I yeah. am. I'm looking at a set now. Yeah, I, I keep thinking that I should do that. Then And then my Marshall speaker came along, so it got shelved. But the, these <laughs> new speakers um, look as though they're just the high, the business, and they, they you know, they... they, they uh, um, got um, all the specs you'd expect from a, a pair of a, you know desktop class speakers or, or monitors for your computer or, or or bookshelf speakers, seventy watt output and all the rest of it. Um, the three hundred and sixty nine dollars. They're not quite available yet, but they're coming. Um, 
but the the the, um, the 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 thing that they're they're touting as being the interesting thing is that you can charge other USB devices from it. So it's got a it, it effectively pass through power, um, and it can you can charge your phone, whatever, plug it into the USB C on the back, and um, you get sixty five watts charging through the the USB C port, um, and it's turbo GAN charging which, as we know, is very, very good and helpful. Aluminium drivers in the... um in the, the 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 components inside it, blah blah blah, loads of base it says, and it they do look look the part. They've even got a little uh, clip out stand thingy on the front, so you can to some degree get isolation from surfaces and point them up towards you. Sat one each side of a large screen computer, like you clearly have got, they'd actually be really good. Lots of high res audio specs going on, and all the rest of it. They do look really, really nice, and um, they've also got Marshall style um, volume and bass, and and what's it? You know, proper old knobs on the side. Um, so I fancy these, and if I hadn't bought my Marshalls, my Marshall, I might have actually been tempted. Yeah. Oh, they they do look gorgeous, and especially the knobs. That's the one thing I will criticise mine for. I can't remember what mine are. But I keep the manual underneath. I've got the Edifier R one eight five zero DBs hooked up to my um, my computer, and I think they're absolutely superb. Anything I've tried to replace them with over the years has been dog shit to be honest yeah. but the um it, it comes with a, a remote control mm-hmm. to, to adjust them which can be useful if you're using them uh, as actual, actual book, bookshelf speakers on the other side of the room but uh, I, I do miss knobs and buttons i want to be yeah. able to reach over and and hit a button so I'll, I'll keep an eye on these and see whenever they come to to the uk hopefully they arrive um fairly soon because i mean i'm just i'm on amazon now looking <laughs> other ones and going, yeah, I had those, I had those, I had those, but none have ever compared to these, and I just love these. Yeah. I've never really, before mm. I spoke to you, I'd never really kind of, Edifier was not on my radar at all, but yeah, I can see that they're very good and well done, and yeah. They are, they're, they're very, you get an awful lot for your for your money. And they are a wee bit more expensive, depending on what you're looking at. I suppose they do do cheap end stuff, but uh, they're a good bit more expensive than what you might normally find. But you can guarantee that those speakers that you're buying are going to blow you away um, yeah. when you consider the money that you're paying out for them. So hopefully they'll be 299 for those who want to buy them in the UK when it arrives. I did check, but they're not here yet. Oh. Um, so... The Edifier mm. QR65, they're called. And they look pretty darn sexy, too. Indeed. Oh, the yes. knobs on the side are not bass and treble. They're volume and... What's that bottom one? What does it say underneath that bottom one? Oh, um, they're for sale through Q&B Audio. They're £329. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't see what that bottom one is, but it's not Marshall style bass and treble, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, not quite so good on the knobs as Marshall. But um, can you see what it says? <laughs> I'm looking on this website to see if there's a close up on that side. The top one is the top uh, one says volume, but I can't. There's two words underneath the bottom one. No, I can't quite make no. it out. Oh well. Maybe it's time. It might fast forward and rewind time. Yes, most likely. I can't zoom in on that either. Mm. Right. Well, yes, they're lovely looking. Absolutely lovely looking. And and kind of sci-fi. With that that white line inside of them. Yeah, I want those. I do. And now. (laughs) Right. Okay. So, uh, phone zone. Motorola is reportedly going to be bringing back its uh, its flagship ultra smartphone, the Edge 50 lineup. Ted 
are these exciting devices? I, I guess they I've are. I've got the Edge 30 Ultra, um, and they completely missed out the Edge 40 Ultra. They went for the 40 Pro in some regions and blah, blah, blah. The 40 Neo and the 40 something else. Pro? Was it? Yeah, the Pro um, in some regions. But um, anyway, they missed the Edge 50 Ultra out of the whole range, and they brought it back now. And so I'm very pleased about that because the Edge 30 Ultra is the best Motorola since Moto Mods were uh, taken away. Um, it has got better specs as well. So there's going to be an Edge 50 Pro as well. Um, there's an Edge 50 Fusion. The Fusion tends to be the, the last Fusion didn't have Qi charging, for example, um, whereas the Ultra has everything. And I think the Pro has most things. The Pro has not got the so so much of an up to date chipset however the ultra is going to have the snapdragon 8s gen 3 um and tons of camera stuff including a five times optical zoom via a um, periscope um and um, I think, you see, this is going to be um, controversial and you're going to disagree with me here, but I like the slightly curved displays and they're sticking with the Edge 50 Ultra with a slightly curved display. I'm not talking about outrageously curved, just slightly curved. And I think that's... Outrageously I just, <laughs> I, I just think that that's really, really nice. Now, the Edge, um, the Motorola Edge... Plus 2020 had waterfall edges, and that was just ridiculous. I've got one here still, um, but this is more subtle, and it's really nice. I like that. It's going to come in all these different colours, and also it's going to be running this new... The, the other bit of news really here is that um, reliably linked is that the UI is going to be changing. So instead of it being called My UI, which it has been up to now, it's going to be called Hello UI. Um, which which oh, fits in right. with Hello Moto, um, okay. and um, the the whole interface they say is the experience based around Android fourteen. Now I've got Android fourteen on my Motorola devices now, or well, most of them, uh, no, in fact all of them, and I have not seen that this Hello UI is part of that. But maybe I haven't looked close enough, or they haven't pushed it hard enough. Anyway, the news here is that the Edge 50 Ultra is back, and I'm going to be straight on to Motorola PR and say I did the Edge 30 um, Ultra at uh, some length for you. Give me a new 50 Ultra 2. <laughs> oh, they're doing a 50 Ultra 2? <laughs> oh. No, that's not. It's, it's nice looking. It is, aside from that bloody screen. Yeah, why would you do? I that? Don't, I, I I disagree. I think the Edge Thirty Ultra screen is lovely. It has a class about it, which is just yeah, well, it's classy. Unlike the three Pixel phones that are apparently are coming this year, they reckon that there's going to be three now. So the, pic, the yes. Pixel Nine is not only going to have a um, a Pixel and a Pixel Pro version; it's also going to have a. a basic pixel 9 a pixel 9 pro and a pixel 9 pro xl so google are getting stupid with naming conventions if this is true um but we'll find out at the the event i, I guess that although the, the leaker involved here is a reliable one apparently um what i don't like about these renders i don't know what you think about this we're back to edges again is that they've just made it look like a a, a three-year-old iPhone, like like nothing phone did. They just made the sides, unlike Samsung did with the S twenty four. Really, exactly. They they they've all just they're all just copying Apple, and it's just stupid. So that presumably, so the kids out there can con their friends that they've been able to afford an outrageously expensive Apple device. And I, I just don't like the whole design of that flat edge. I'm afraid. Um, Anyway, so, yeah, three different devices and presumably three different sizes. The 6.03-inch size for the bit, the bottom one, and um, it looks like probably the biggest one's going to be 6.7-inch. So, actually, the Pro XL is not that much bigger than the, the, Pro, the, the 8 Pro, to be honest, but there's a middle one as well, um, which will be the Ordinary Pro. It's all a bit unknown, but yeah, reliable leaks. So, what do you think? 
I very much like it. Um, I, having used the S24 for a couple of weeks now, I just absolutely adore the metallic feel around the side. And it, I'm not going to lie about it. I have sat there thinking I feel like I'm using an iPhone with Android on it. And that's no bad thing. It really is. And I don't feel that um, that particular design is really quite iconic, beautiful and lovely to hold. And it's not fair that Android devices should be denied that. And I'm all right with any other manufacturer coming along and doing it because it just works. It feels good. I've always picked up iPhones. Uh, my, my daughter had one around this time whenever they were doing that design. And I've always thought, oh, this just, it feels so damn good. And then going back to my, whatever I've been using, going, oh, it's got some sort of tapered screen here. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm on board with this. Very happy that they're they're adopting this style and it'll sell because it feels damn good. No, it will um, sell because it really because it good. feels and looks like an iPhone, and that's what's so that's yeah. what's so annoying about it is that yet again Apple monopolise everyone else and and drive what everyone else is doing. Bloody Apple! Well, that, that, because it works, and it's comfortable, and it looks good. I think that it, it, that's really subjective because I think that curved screens Motorola do look really good as well, and I like the fact that it goes to a a point in the side almost, and I think that's really, really classy. So it's it's just subjective, isn't it? It it kind of is. It's it's wrong, but it kind <laughs> of is. <laughs> oh, but after curved screens, I've had their time, uh, and I'm tired wanker. of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah ted going back to keyboards because i thought this was the keyboard we were talking about earlier yeah. um this mechanical keyboard is one that you've put in and it looks really quite cool although i don't agree with the analogy of commodore but why not do tell us about this um i don't know why because it's got all the commodore kind of um style and design language about it include what are those two big red buttons on the side um, I don't know. They, the Commodore never had those. Um, it looks more like a Nintendo. Uh, there is one further on down called 8-Bit Do. Uh, they're doing a Commodore 64 feel, uh, t- feel mechanical keyboard. Oh, yeah. But the one we're talking about here is very Nintendo. Perhaps they're talking about that, that one further down, are they? Um, I think they are. Not, and they've just decided not to. They put the wrong one at the top. No, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. um, the, the, the retro keyboards, yeah, and whatever your whatever you think they look like or not look like, these look really cool to me, and I, I, I'm, I'm getting the urge to go back to a mechanical keyboard again. All this keyboard talk, <laughs> and and actually that one that's further down the page, the eight bit do Commodore six C sixty four mechanical one, that looks really cool. I love the way that the keys are. Um, are angled back towards the user. That's really nice. And and the, the wedge shape of the thing, I want one of those. Is that, is that one for sale? I'm having a look on their Amazon now. I don't see it. $109.99. I bet that's just America. Yeah. Um, no, that, that link goes to Amazon Co. UK and it just brings the other one up. That thingy there, it must be a mouse. Yeah, that 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 thing on the, the the one at the top with the two red red buttons, I think is a mouse. It's just giant mouse buttons. Oh, right. Okay. I think it is. But going by what it looks like on, because on the Amazon listing, eighty five quid. This one is incidentally. Um, no, they're two super programmable buttons. Not just programmable buttons. Super programmable oh, buttons. Oh, yeah, they are. You're right. So presumably you can do what you like with those. Um, but the um, yeah, it's got those kind of, you know, the, the volume button and programmable macro buttons on the top there. And it, it just looks really, really retro. Um, either one of them. But I, but actually, now you pointed out the Commodore one, I want that one instead. Have you, have you... Yeah, I, I'm not seeing the Commodore one for sale. Uh, They've got, there's the NES one and then there's the Famicom one. I think it's best to, to categorize it as that way. The sort of the Nintendo Entertainment System design that we know for the top loader. And then there's a Famicom one, for, or not the top loader, the the, the, the slide in, uh, I've forgotten what the terminology is. But there's also the Famicom, which is the top loader, which has the, the white and reddish 
a cream and reddish kind of colorant. Right. Uh, whereas the the one you're looking at is is very much the Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay. Well, it's not quite what I but, thought it was then. So um, that's a bit of a shame because I prefer the other one now. Well, I imagine the the Commodore one is coming if they've they've gone. Well, that far uh, well, uh, unless this uh, unless that that photograph of the Commodore one is just an old photograph of someone using a really old bit of kit. Well, I'm now on eight bit website yes uh there's the famicom there's the NES, and there's the commodore one. Oh right okay uh a pre-order now for the u.s ah, right oh it is coming then well done if they do an amstrad one i'll have it okay anyway i used you to hear me a bit do <laughs> I used to really like, to, having just slagged Apple off just now, I, I will say that I really, really liked my Apple keyboard when I had an iMac. It was just lovely. The keys just worked beautifully well. It was, I think it was probably the nicest keyboard I'd ever used at the time. Um, and I would, I would have that back, no question at all. But uh, mechanical keyboards now are just something you've got to really get used to again. As I say, I've tried. Yeah, but they're a nightmare for podcasts. Yes, that's true. Unless you're really, really I won't careful. be having you on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's divided down into there's the C64 edition, the N edition, which is Nintendo, and then the FAMI edition, which is the Famicom. Okay. And the Commodore one comes with what looks like a little joysticky type thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The FAMI edition... Oh no, there's there's still not a Commodore one, is there? Well, that I put in a link just below it that says here. Yeah, and it's the the first. Yeah, one but it's not. But but common. that one that on that first link, the C sixty four edition, is not the same one as the person using that photo uh, in that photograph on the on the other link. That yeah, it no, is. No, it's not. It's completely different. It is. It's got the wee red light over on the right hand side, and then there's the the rainbow logo with C sixty four. There's th- there aren't any fingers; <laughs> they're not there. But I imagine that whenever you start using it, there will be fingers. Okay, then. Pre-order then. Let's see how much it is. Did Did you already tell me that? Check uh, out. Be my one hundred nine dollars. Nine ninety nine. So that can that can wait for my resurgence of retro keyboards. <laughs> well, I imagine it'll come to to the UK fairly yeah. soon because they are being sold through the Amazon website, and they have the other two for eighty five quid. I'd like to see it be somewhat similar to that. Indeed, yes. Cool. I like that whole thing. All right. Well, what you can do is uh, is you can take your Kindle and you can turn it into a clock and weather station, which is probably quite handy to be able to deal with old Kindles that are lying around the house. Yeah, definitely. I like this idea, actually. I've been looking to see if I can get an, an old e-ink display to be able to just just to do this, essentially. I've got, my, I've got mine on charge here, because after I saw this story this morning, I thought, I'm going to charge my Kindle up and have a go at this. Unfortunately, it's not charged yet. Um, but, yeah, there's a bit of a, a, a kind of worker. You've got, to, you've got to go in and add some kind of um, commands into the the um, the browser, which is a, a, a labs-based uh, function on a Kindle, which you need to turn on in the first place. And then you've got to go to this website and put the HTML um, thing in, and then it pops up in Chinese, and you've got to change it to English. So it's a bit of a fiddle, but th- there's clear instructions of how to do it. And once it's done, perhaps I'll report back on the next show when I've actually done it, and um, it should be working. But you're right; it's a perfect use for an old Kindle, isn't it? It is, yeah. Because they're well, some of them are touchscreen, aren't they? Or any of the ink ones? All, all of them no. are touchscreen, yeah. Right, okay, so you could essentially have an e-ink home assistant sitting beside you where you can turn on and off lights beside your computer um, if someone was to write some sort of custom yeah, script that yeah. could go on and this. And they probably have. And this is hopefully the first step toward that because the amount of Kindles that are sitting in drawers yeah. um, and, and you'll see the value of them rising again if, if that was to be realised on eBay um, and you could get some money back, yeah. 
Cool. Indeed. I like this. Yeah, I'll have a go at that anyway. Um, report back. Cool. Cool. Okay, Google Gallows and Chrome Coroner. What are you going to tell us, Ted? That Lenovo Chromebox, that tiny little thing, which I spoke about before, which is the size yes. of a well, a, a large mobile phone with square edges. Um, it, <laughs> um, apparently, it's um, something that wasn't previously reported, is that it also can be powered by a um, power bank. So, oh, cool. yeah, if you've got a power bank in your pocket, you can... Uh, mind you, it doesn't tell you how you're, gonna, you're supposed to power the screen to, to plug it into. You, st- mm. <laughs> you still need some electricity <laughs> to do that. Um, so there, there, there's that as well, that little Chrome box, which is called the... Is, is it just called the Lenovo Chrome box? Oh, Chrome, Chrome Micro. Box Micro. The Chrome box yeah. Micro, um, which, yeah, we, we spoke about that before, so we won't go into it again. And also, I keep checking every two days to see about the google drive in fact, i'll do it again now on the google drive website on you know in a in a desktop browser there's supposed to be a switch in settings looking again now to turn it into dark mode but no so we've got dark mode in google drive on mobile devices but it just isn't coming as usual with google they announce thing about something about six months after they actually do it and i really fancy that so this document that we're looking at now if you want it to be dark inverted commas you've got to kind of use all sorts of workarounds to make that so but this will just be a switch and you can just turn it across um, i like it on dark mode on tablets and on my phone, and I want it on Windows, please. I love that 9to5 Google have gone to the effort to put in on their website one of those sliders that shows you (laughs) what it's like with light, and then you can thread it across to what it would be like in the dark. Yes. That's amazing. Like, you have on what Birmingham Town Centre used to look like historically. Yes. <laughs> it's the same, but black with white text, as opposed to white with black text. Brilliant. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> um, I keep looking out for this, and I, I will um, come back to it when it happens, because I think that that's going to make a huge difference. I really like that. Having said that, um, there's a switch in MeWe to turn it dark, and I decided after trying that out that it didn't really quite work, so we'll see. Cool. Yeah, well, um, it, it, long may it continue. Dark mode is great. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're not doing hark back this week. Suck eggs. So next up is Bargain Basement, <laughs> and I'll go first. Uh, the first thing we have is that I almost bought this this morning and then realized I don't really need it. I really, really don't. It's nice. And I've, I know we've discussed them before, but because it was such a big saving, I figured it was a really good deal. And I, I had to stop when I was checking out going, what, what am I going to do with it? it? It'll be useful. It's the the Listen, L-I-S-E-N, Lysen, Listen. Leeson, Leeson, uh, tablet stand, 360 degree adjustable rotating tablet holder for your desk. Uh, and you can set an iPad on it and look at it. It's it's just exactly that. It looks very nice. I'm sure it's quite plasticky, to be honest. But uh, it just, it, it holds your tablet up and it can face it towards you whenever you're sitting working. I imagine you can put other things on it as well if you need to. You could put a book or some music. Twen- no, 20 <laughs> kilos of books. Do you, you see that photograph there? Oh, I see that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they reckon it's really strong by the looks of it. <laughs> right, okay. Well, it was originally £26, twenty five ninety nine, and they've reduced it by 27% down to eighteen ninety nine. Uh, then there is 10% off voucher whenever you go to the checkout through Amazon. But again, there is a promo code, which I can't get, but I was going to ask you, Ted, can you get the promo code and stick it into the oh. the show notes? Because I've already redeemed it. And I, it won't show me what it was. Uh, yeah, here it is. I shall put it in there. I began with a P, I think. There you go. Yeah. 
and that brings it down to thirteen pounds and forty. Gosh, that's that's a, or twenty nine. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> so you've got ten percent off plus twenty percent off. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a really good value, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, so that that's why I almost almost ordered it. Yeah, and then saw sense. Well, yeah, I, I kind of figured, where am I going to put it on my desk? Why do I even need it on it's my desk? It's only a bargain if you're going to get it anyway. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Now, well back done. to keyboards. The Logitech MX Keys um, Advance, the one that we've just been talking about, both of us, was reduced last week to even less money, but it it's bounced back up to ninety nine ninety nine. I'm afraid. It was seventy nine ninety nine, but it's bounced back up slightly. Um, so you missed out on that bargain, but it's still twenty pound cheaper than it usually is, and actually, it's an awful lot cheaper than it was when it was first released. Um, so ninety nine ninety nine for the best non mechanical keyboard there is, and I'm being offered five months at twenty quid on that as well. So Logitech MX keys really highly recommended by us all at Tech Addicts. Absolutely, I use mine day and daily, but I am noticing that my A button is starting to wear ah, i contacted um logitech when i had the shift button starting to wear and admittedly it wasn't a huge amount of time after i bought it but they sent me a new one and they didn't want the old one back they said yeah mm. so I, I ended up with two of them and um one i mean it works perfectly well it's just it, it's worn away but they responded really positively i was quite surprised yep no problem that's defective we'll send you a new one See, I can't really do that because I've had this for, what, six yeah. years? <laughs> it's worn down because I've used it that yeah. much. Fair enough. <laughs> and it's the WSAD. I think all of them are going, it's far too many first-person shooters. Yeah. yeah. I need to stop to, that. To be fair, when I wrote to them about it, it was about a month after, no, probably more than a month. I would say I go for about six weeks and it was starting to wear away. Ah, you've been dribbling on it a lot, haven't no you? No doubt at all, and not from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, flipping heck, the next word I have to say is going to conjure up visions again. Okay, anchor. <laughs> USB Type-C plug. Uh, iPhone charger, a two-pack of 20-watt USB-C fast wall chargers. Two-pack, that is. Mm. Not, not the passed away uh, r and no, wrapper, isn't it, two-pack? No, this is a, a, a collection of plugs um, that are worth £16 and have been brought down in price by 38% to 9 99 which I thought was For quite two. good. You can only plug one thing into each of them, but there's two plugs yeah. Five in quid each. the pack. Yeah. Very good. Neat. And they're they're kind of nice looking. They're white plastic with anchor written on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Um, yeah. If only I needed some. <laughs> exactly. As, as always, it's not a bargain if you don't. And need also, it. I would be buying the next thing if I needed it, but I don't because I've got about two hundred and forty-one. There's that number again. <laughs> um, Bluetooth speakers. But anyone that hasn't got one of these. Um, the Soundcore Motion 300, um, which is a Bluetooth speaker with 30 watts st uh, of output, and um, it's a nice, really nice little Soundcore speaker. I really, really want one, but I've just got so many of them. I don't need it. 79.99, and there's a 20% voucher you can apply to it, which brings it down to £63 or thereabouts. Um, and it just looks really... I, I really, really want one. I've got to prevent myself from buying one. The normal, no, <laughs> yes, you the do. normal price is eighty nine ninety nine, so it's 10 quid off anyway, and then there's that 20% voucher. So, no, no, I won't buy it. Where would you put this anyway? You've got your Marshall connected to your, um, your computer, because that's logical. You've got two of those Anchor ones either side of your bed or your boudoir as you like to call it uh, for for whenever you're playing Barry White when you have, who is it, the ladies of the night <laughs> um, 
Well, where, where are you going to put these in the exactly, shower? Exactly, exactly. I don't. I just don't need it. I've got. I've got a, a, a bunch of Bluetooth speakers that I sit doing nothing. I don't need it, but I just want it. You know what it's like when you just want something. It's a bit like your stand just now. You've resisted that stand, even though you want it, <laughs> and so I'm resisting this. But anyway, anyone else that wants one, get one. Motion 300 is cool. But you know the guarantee is that it'll go back in price the day you realise that you actually need it. <laughs> yes. Okay, next up is one that I, oh, I'm on the fence about this because I could actually use it. It would be oh, nice to have. Oh, yeah, I want one. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> Behringer monitor to USB headphone amplifier. That is so cool. It's down in price from it's down forty nine percent from thirty five thirty four pounds to sixty seven pounds and seventy three p. A bit weird that, but uh, yeah, th this allows you to tinker with your headphones and stuff like that. From oh, your output, of your computer. Your output to, I could I could output my sound to my Marshall in one and my headphones in the other. <gasps> oh, right, okay. It looks like no, you don't need one, Ted. You don't. <laughs> <do> you? <laughs> well, I haven't got one. At least I haven't got one. <laughs> well, true. Yes. Yeah. But it's it's one of those desktop things that you really really like the idea of it, loads of knobs and buttons yeah, all over yeah. it for being able to to twiddle yeah. with, and even if you don't need to change things, you'll probably just turn the knobs anyway yeah. to something else and then back to where they were, or even or even just, and you'll feel good about yourself. In the middle, <laughs> there's a whacking great big volume knob, which is just really nice. I mean, it's that that's kind of retro having a. It reminds me of my hi-fi separates in the old days, where you had whacking great big knobs to turn and not fiddly little ones. Yeah. Yeah, quite right. I want one. I do. I do want one 49% well. off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an absolute I'll bargain. I talked myself into that one very easily. Good grief. Yeah. Well, close the window and walk away. Talk, talking about Marshall, we're back on Marshall and <laughs> headphones. The, the Marshall Major 4, which I've also got here, they have been reduced from 130 quid to 78 quid. And the headline feature about headline, headline feature about these mm -hmm. is the 80 hours of playback time, which is just amazing. Um, Steve Litchfield put me onto these back in the day because they're Bluetooth and even on using Bluetooth, even if you're not using it with a cable, they're 80 hours of playback. And I've tested that and it really works. It, I, I, I've never known a, a set of Bluetooth headphones that last so long. And where they, I'm sure you were hungry by the end of it. <laughs> where, and where they put the battery in there to make that happen, I've no idea because they're not that big. Um, the, my only complaint about them really is that they're, they're, they are actually quite small on my ears because I've got quite big ears. But um, yeah, anyway, reduced down uh, to seventy eight ninety nine and highly recommended. Um, again, it's not you. You don't get hundreds of smarts and assistant this and assistant that and all the rest of it. You get basic use with controls on there, but you can cable it up, and they're a really good pair of headphones. Yeah. Oh, they look nice. I, I you just put me off them though by saying they're a bit small. Yeah, I like my headphones to have a bit of heft to yeah. them. So I'm looking at the monitor twos, Oof. which are expensive. The monitor twos, which ones are yeah, they? Yeah, from now? Marshall. I've got the. I've got. Uh, hang on a minute. Monitor two. Monitor two. The monitor two. They're down in price from two hundred and seventy nine pounds. Oh yeah, yeah. Two hundred and thirty five. I've got a pair of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. um, they yeah, th those ones are really tight on my head, which is why I don't favour them. Um, but yeah, for short listening periods of time, um, my yeah, those ones are quite nice as well. But they don't have the same battery power or anything. Swish. All right. Okay. Nice. Okay, moving on. Um, the, uh, I tweeted this out the other the other day because I was really tempted by it as one of those bits of hardware that I'm looking to possibly upgrade. Rather than looking at old stuff, I thought whenever it comes to a turntable, I might go new stuff. But there was one drawback to it. 
Um, but this is the Sony PSLX310BT, which is a Bluetooth turntable uh, that has a built-in phono and preamp. Um, it is, however, belt-driven. It is not direct drive, and that was the one thing that held me back from it. But if you're not worried about that, or you're a very casual listener, listener, then you probably will do well by this, because it's down from £232 to £199, uh, which is a pretty excellent saving. And it's a good-looking deck. What do you think? I love the tone arm. It's so sexy. Um, um, it's okay. just really, really nicely um, designed, um, as is often the case with Sony stuff. But it's really nice. The other thing I would say is that um, it, uh, um, if it's belt driven, as long as the, with, in my experience of playing with turntables, as long as the belt is underneath the platter then it's okay. Mm -hmm. The ones you want to avoid are the belt-driven ones where the, where the belt is round the outside of the thing and the motor's on the top. They're, oh, yeah. they're just horrible. I don't like them at all. But if it's underneath the, the turntable, I think it's okay. But that's really, really sexy. That, that tone arm just does it for me. Very, very nice indeed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. So this podcast has now cost you I'll buy the hundred, two, three hundred. No, I can't points. buy that. I've got two project project um, turntables. Anyway, I couldn't possibly justify another one. Well, except it's got Bluetooth. I haven't got a turntable with Bluetooth. That's true. And and that would work with your Marshall's. No, no, um, no, no, no. It doesn't work with your Marshall speaker. No, not at all. Not the slightest. Never. No. Never. No. Never. We wouldn't allow that. Just saved you two hundred <laughs> quid. If you like? Yeah. Right. Well, there you go. Um, I figured that was a pretty good deal, and I'm, I'm still on the fence about it, but if only it said direct drive, I'd be happy. Have you got any records? Loops. Oh, right, okay. Fair enough, then. Last one is the Nothing Phone 2. Talking about phones that look like iPhones, unashamedly. The Nothing Phone 2 is here. 256 gigabyte, 12 gigabytes of RAM version, um, and it has been reduced for the first time that I can remember seeing it reduced from the uh, from the starting price of six hundred and twenty nine quid four eighty three or four eighty three fifty twenty three percent off. I had one of these in for review. I didn't particularly like it because of that aforementioned design thing, but actually, it's a mm. very capable phone and it's very British, very British indeed. Mm. Um, and it's, it spells colour correctly. <laughs> um, Thankfully. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, for, for those that like the whole glyph interface thing, it's, um, it, it's really good. Anyway, yeah, the first time I've seen it reduced by that amount, certainly. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I thought it was something that popped up on my news feed. Uh, it, it spells colour the French way, with the U. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to... Um, because the Americans adopted it, but without yeah. the French or it, 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 English went over there before f the French influence has happened, and that's why they don't have a U, and we do have a U because we took the French influence or something like there that. There was something in the the the. I, I noticed something. I don't think it was color actually. Um, I noticed that when I was setting up the Nothing Phone, I noticed something that all other phones do the American way. And it was a mark of the fact that this was British designed. And I can't quite remember what it was, but it was something in settings. And I said, oh, yeah, look, everyone else does that the American way. And Nothing Phone is doing it British way. Hurrah, good for you, Nothing Phone. Yeah, OK, fair enough. All right, well, that about brings us to the end of the show, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, just under two hours as well. Hey, yeah. that was a good turnaround. Mm. So, if you want to get in touch with us, you can by emailing us at gareth at techaddicts.uk. You can also find us on Twitter as well, at techaddictsuk. You can find me on Twitter too, and that's Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S. I also have my Mastodon account um, somewhere, and uh, if you want links and things like that, you can find them on garethmiles.com. Ted, 
where can they find Same you? Same thing for me, really. Any links you want from me are at tedsalmon.com, not at garethmiles.com. Um, and <laughs> uh, all the old audio podcasts that I'm involved in, we're involved in, and all the links to the MeWe groups. Do join us in the MeWe groups. We need your input and chatter about all things tech. Um, we've got a good number of MeWe groups now, so do come and join us. I'm on Mastodon too, and I'm guilty of not checking in there enough, but I'll try harder. And if you want to buy me a coffee, you can do that. It's at paypal.me forward slash Ted Salmon, and I will thank you in advance for helping to support what I do and buy some bread for my table. Actually, no, not bread, um, <laughs> vegetables for my table. <laughs> vegetables, yes. Okie dokie. Right, well, we'll catch us all on two weeks, and don't forget about Projector Room on Wednesday, Ooh, where we'll yeah. be talking about the latest and greatest movies. Yay. Take care now. Bye. Bye.